With six castaways left in the game, winning immunity had never been more important. Before the immunity challenge, the castaways were blindsided by another twist. They would have no time to strategize after the challenge, but instead would head immediately to Tribal Council. After narrowly escaping the vote in the last Tribal Council, this was perhaps the most important challenge yet for Adam and Dakota. Contestants would need to balance a ball on a plate and then at regular intervals, reach down to add more to the plate while continuing to balance. After four minutes, the players would finish the rest of the challenge doing it all on one leg. When he needed it most, Dakota outlasted Ashley and the rest of the players to win immunity. With no time to plan before tribal, no one was certain of what would happen next. Ashley, do you feel like you have any idea what's going to happen at this tribal? I don't. You just kind of have to put your faith in people that you've talked to before and hope that some of those conversations carry through on this boat. You were my hand last. Got to take that. Good luck. Code is playing everybody like a fiddle right now, and it's so tough to see, and I just can't listen to him. Even if nobody else votes for Jimmy, I, I have to take the shot. Hope that maybe a couple other people join me. I think I'm going. Feeling unconfident about her place in the game, Katrina turned to the only safety she felt she had, the hidden immunity idol. What? Oh my god, she's got it in her... Ultimately, Katrina was left wishing that she had saved her idol, as with four votes to two, it ended up being Adam voted out over Jimmy. It was then time for the biggest immunity challenge of the season. To begin, each player would race to a station where they counted a series of objects. They would then run back to enter the amount of each object they counted into a combination lock. If the lock didn't open, they would have to run back to recount before trying again. The first three to unlock their bags, untie the ball within, and place it into the basket would move on to the next round. Dakota solved the combination first with Katrina not far behind, leaving one spot left in the next round. For Megan, Jimmy, and Ashley, it was a battle of endurance, memory, and a little misfortune. On his third attempt, Jimmy successfully opened the combination lock, but lost concentration and didn't realize it. This opened the door for Megan to solve her combination, but she struggled to get her bag untied. Right as Jimmy returned to find his open combination lock, Megan untied her bag and became the final person to advance to the second portion of the challenge. In the second part of the challenge, the three remaining contestants, Katrina, Megan, and Dakota, raced to solve a 100-piece puzzle. The first one to finish the puzzle won the most important immunity yet. Megan jumped out to a commanding early lead and looked well on her way to winning her first immunity. But in this challenge, just one missing piece can send you spiraling, and Dakota saw the opening. He used it to win his second straight immunity challenge and guaranteed his spot in the final four. So she's already like squirreling. I 
think it should be Katrina. Yeah. She, I out of everybody that's left, she has the best overall game yeah. and the best chance yeah. of winning. I think. I think if we don't vote her out now, we're getting her to win. Yeah. For one castaway, this vote hit harder than the others. Yeah. She knows her name's out there. I don't think I can vote for her. Let's vote for Katrina. I can't. Can you vote for Ashley? Yeah. I mean, if you feel com if you feel more comfortable throwing like, my name down, that's fine. Yeah. You need to throw it. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I can't beat you. I'm nervous. I don't know what to do. No, I know. Katrina, so, I haven't, I did not throw your name out there once. No, I know, but I know it's already going with Jimmy and Ashley. I know that they're thinking about putting me out there. I don't know I'm what to do. I'm not going to hold it against you. It's I just, don't know it what sucks because no, I have I been playing my ass off, so. No, I know. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm going to. Yeah, but you might. I'm just being honest. I appreciate being honest. It just, it sucks. No, I know. But I don't know what to do. I love you. If it's not you, I want it to be. If it's not me, I want it to be you. Trina, you seem to get you know, a little emotional after the immunity challenge. Walk me through what's going on in your mind right now as you approach the end of this game. I just, I know that my name is out there, so I just need to win that. So we'll see if I stay a little bit longer, but I'm going to see. You feel like your name is on the top of the Oh, block, yeah, right? 100%. I, I know that it is, so we just see if the friendships and loyalties that I've had bring true or not. Actually, that's got to be. Perhaps music in your ears. Oh no! Someone else is on the chopping block. Yeah, it's me. I might be there. It's me, Katrina. <laughs> it's actually between Katrina and I tonight, and everyone's told us at least they're honest. But honestly, I think at this point I prefer a blind side, like last time, because at least I didn't have to stew over it. But it, it's either Katrina or I. So I think she played a kick-ass game, and I just hope people recognize that if they let her through this. This vote, she's going to win it. And it's if she gets through this vote, <laughs> if she, if, honestly, if she gets through this vote, then she deserves it and she's going to win. Absolutely can't stop. She's been kick ass game. She's been mentally strong, competitive, physical, everything. And that is what Survivor is. And I just hope the other competitors, for their own game, play their cards right tonight. If you escape this vote, I'm going to write your name down again because you deserve to win. Katrina's strength in challenges and chance of winning was deemed too great for the rest of the tribe to keep her, and with no more hidden immunity idol to protect herself with, her quest for the title of Soul Survivor came up just a few votes short. Despite votes that were taking a toll on the tribe, for at least one castaway, things were going exactly how they'd envisioned. The plan's working perfectly. I want to go to the end with Megan and Ashley. I think I can beat Megan, and I think my game socially has been a little better than Ashley's, which is surprising for me. But I knew I needed to get Katrina out because she was going to run away with the whole thing. And everyone felt the same way, which was great. It stinks for Megan because she was so close with Katrina that she couldn't fathom writing her name down. So that's why I got thrown out there. And that's why my name was out there. I told Megan, if you don't feel comfortable voting for anyone else, vote for me. Because at the end of the day, it's all about friendships and relationships. And if I think it's the end, I can say, hey, I helped you out here. Because you didn't know what to do, I figured it out for you. And that might get me a $100 prize. With four players left, it was time for the final immunity challenge. Contestants would run to grab puzzle pieces that would then be used to fill the remaining slots of an unfinished puzzle. The challenge and pressure of the situation pushed each castaway to their limit, and as the sun set on the final challenge of the season, Megan cracked the code and won her first individual immunity, guaranteeing her a spot at the final tribal council. The only question remaining was who would sit next to her, and who would be the next person voted out of the game. Do you think the fact that you had won before gives you an advantage that people would want to take you to the final thinking you might have a lesser shot of winning again? That makes sense. Um, that was what I pitched. It's like very slow. I don't see them giving me the vote. So I'm a body who's not going to be getting votes. 
Jimmy, does that pitch make sense to you? Oh, it makes sense for sure, but unfortunately, it's tough because as someone that played in season one, I got to see firsthand what Dakota could do. And so it's difficult seeing the exact same thing pretty much play out in season two. Despite his best efforts, Dakota could not convince the others that he wasn't a threat and was unanimously voted out by the other three. With that, the final tribal council was set. Jimmy, the hobbled competitor who after an early injury had to shift his physical game to one built on relationships with those around him. Megan, the under-the-radar newcomer who developed the right alliances and was consistently on the right side of the votes. And Ashley, the crafty strategist who, after turning on her closest ally, used her wits and strategic mind to forge a path to the end of the game. The game now turned to the jury. The very players that these three voted out would now determine their fate in the game and who was deserving of the title of sole survivor. Congrats to these three. It is not easy to make it far in this game, it's especially not easy to make it to the final three. I think they have all done a phenomenal job getting here, but it's just getting here. The difference between getting here and winning the game is being the sole survivor. So we'll start with a opening statement from each of the three of you. Ashley, go ahead and start with you. I really enjoyed playing with all of you guys. I feel like I got a chance to play with most people and it was a lot of fun and I had a lot of fun this time around but I also as I look around at everyone I think I had a hand in putting almost all of you on the jury so but it put me here and it it benefited me and it was for my game and that that was what I committed to I mean you saw in the video that's what I committed to coming in I didn't want to get wrapped up in an alliance and get blindsided like I did last time and I was determined to play my own game even if that meant turning on my alliance in the right moment, not in an inappropriate moment, but in the right moment. And I think I played strategically and I played hard and I played to my strengths, which are not physical. Um, I didn't win a single immunity challenge and I'm still sitting right here. So that is why you should vote for me. Hi Megan, you're up next. <laughs> I can say that I played this game based on my relationships and I think that's what carried me in the game. I think I tried to make a connection with every single person in this game if I had the opportunity to. I was not the physical threat that I would have loved to have been, but unfortunately this wasn't the cards for me, but I think I gave it my all, especially in those team challenges when I knew that my team safety was on the line. I gave it my best shot every single time. Um, I think that I got, I was on the right side of the numbers a lot of the time, and I think that that helped me in my favor just because I had the relationships to continue me along in the game, so. I don't know, I think that's why I'm here. Kind of echoing to what both of them said, thank you guys for playing, love playing with all of you. Um, my big thing for my game was adaptability. Whether it was pre-merge when I injured myself, trying to continue to do physical activities the entire time to where post-merge, we came in under, without the numbers and I was able to adapt and it's kind of slipped in my way into staying in this game and fighting and clawing for survival. And I think that's why I should vote for me. I played this game, I outwitted a few of you, outlasted most of you, and outplayed maybe a handful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's great. All right, Dre, it's time to turn it over to you. Uh, this is for all three of you, so answers from each. What was your biggest lie throughout the game? I looked you dead in the eyes okay. and, <laughs> and said, um, yeah, no, it's not you, I'm with you, because I knew you had an extra vote, Sorry. and I knew that I didn't want you getting squirrely, you did anyway, but we had the numbers, but I, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. Very good. I made up a lie knowing, saying that I knew that they had a girl's alliance, when, you know, I thought it was just an observation. But I wanted to plant that seed so they would kind of falter from their, their alliance already. 
mine would be to Andrew when he approached me at the very beginning of the game and said, me, you and Connor are all the way top three. And I said, let's do it. And I went back to my lines. I said, we have Andrew and we'll come loose when we need to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but I didn't write your name down. I was honest, I did not write your name down. Can't, can't confirm. But, but that was a big lie. But it, it was part of my strategy to keep our biggest, our alliance strong and our core alliance even stronger. Great, good on you, Yep, absolutely. One of the biggest reasons why I'm so proud to play with everybody here for both seasons is because for both seasons, we've had people in those chairs that all three deserve to win. So I just want to say that first, that you all have played games that I respect, and that I think that all can be winning games. Chips. What I want to hear is from all three of you, what was your most important alliance getting you here at the final three? Yeah, I'll say my most important alliance was with Tan because we were we were like this until we couldn't be anymore, and it broke my heart to write your name down. But it, I think it was one of my biggest moves in the game was deciding to write your name down and show the other alliance that I was with them wholeheartedly and that helped get me here. But I do think you played a big hand in helping me get to that point. So my biggest alliance, and this is going to sound very selfish, was with myself. First time playing this story. game, I was so dead set on making alliances that this time around, I wanted to play for myself and make sure I did the best thing for myself. Question I have for two of you. I don't want to give my vote to someone who's just in the right place at the right time. I don't want to give my vote to someone who is just riding people's coattails. What is an example of a time that you were the strategic leader of your alliance? I knew that I wanted to get big people out early in this game, and I took the opportunities when I had them. I knew I wanted Joey out. Like, that's a move that I was proud of because I wanted it, and I, it scared me, but I was excited when we pulled it off. Um, I think that I was involved in the decision-making process and every single decision my alliance made. I don't think I sat there and waited for somebody to tell me. I don't think I was always offering up information because that would have been detrimental to my game. You'd have to know when to sit back. Um, I was there for the decision-making process as well, but I had to scramble a lot more. I had to put down some people's heads, and I think that's a strategy in itself is making an alliance of five or six when you're four doubt themselves to where they start thinking about, oh, should I take out my own alliance now? And I believe that the first big move was getting Connor out. Everyone wanted to. I stepped up and said it. And then that way I knew that I had the numbers either way, whether working with him and Ashley or working with my original alliance a miles away. At what tribal were you most concerned with your future in this game based on where you were at at that point? What was the scariest moment for you that tried? So when Katrina got voted out, because it was very, everyone was very honest and said, it's either you or Katrina, and we haven't really decided yet. Mm -hmm. So Katrina and I actually had a rumination round. We stood in the room <laughs> and just said, well, I guess we're just letting them make our decision because what else are we gonna do? There's no sense in scrambling at that point because it's in the hands of three people who at this point they're gonna work together and they're gonna make a decision and that's what it is. And so that was probably the scariest moment and truthfully I thought I was going home. But it was actually the exact same tribal that Katrina got voted out because in the last rumination camp it was me, Megan, and Dakota and Megan could not write down Ashley's or Katrina's name, and Dakota had immunity. And I said, if you don't feel comfortable writing these people's names down because you have such a good friendship with them, I will let you write my name down and take that bullet. And at that point, I took the game out of my own, own hands. I think when I started to feel like this is not fun anymore, and I'm just very nervous. So day two. Yeah, like me. Because I was genuinely having so much fun out there, but then you had to start showing your cards, and then it was not fun. Um, when, so sorry, we had to show our cards with Andrew and Adam. I got nervous about you two, and I got nervous that you and Katrina were way too tight, and I wanted her. And so the thing is, I had to cut ties because I can't beat you in the individual immunity challenge, but I felt very exposed in that moment having to show my cards, and I think it took a lot of shuffling after that and a lot of being like, no, I don't know what happened to just Now, the game does shift over to the jury. Tonight, we are casting a vote for a winner. The name that you write down on a piece of paper 
person that you want to be the winner of Survivor Orlando Season 2 in the mid 90s. We get to the vote. I don't want to do it, but you play it. You, you got me to leave with the title. I thought I had your phone. Uh, I thought bringing Dakota that far was a stupid move, but it obviously worked and you made Final Three. I hope you win. You played an amazing game. And you, you got me out with I mean, come on. That was my fault. Uh, three things. Uh, real quick. Number one, Megan, I'm um, so sorry that I didn't get to play with you. I expect the hell out of your game. I think it's a winning game. Number two, uh, Ashley, I didn't think I could find somebody in this game that I could trust as much that I trusted you at the merge. So I really appreciate that. Um, I just really want to make that heard. But number three, I've got to go with this guy. And the reason is because of everything that was said in the final trial. You, you've done for me, you voted for me in the, in the first two tribals. You came to me and said, Miles, I wrote your name down. And from then on, we worked together. And you voted with me from then on. And I also loved your answers in the final tribal. I hope you win. Alright, we're gonna read them right here, right now, let's figure out who the winner of Survivor is the Caribbean Islands. Alright? Yeah. Alright. First vote. Jimmy. James. <laughs> Ashley. Jimmy at one. Ashley one. Megan. All tied up. Jimmy one. Ashley one. Megan one. <laughs> Ashley. Ashley with two votes. Jimmy with one. Megan with one. Jimmy. Ashley with two. Jimmy with two. Megan with one. Megan again. We're tied up again. Jimmy two. Ashley two. Megan two. Jimmy. Jimmy with three votes. Ashley, Megan with two. Ashley. Ashley three votes. Jimmy three votes. Megan two votes. Tied again. Ashley. Ashley with four. Jimmy with three. Megan with three. Jimmy. Jimmy with four. Ashley with four. Megan with three. Jimmy. Jimmy with five. Ashley four, Megan three, one more left. Winner, Survivor. Yeah! Stay tuned for a sneak peek at our next season. Survivor. It is the most complicated game of social politics ever created. Intense. There is no one to rely on. I just can't listen to him. No one to trust. <laughs> In our third season, a new group of castaways will be pushed to their limits. I've been a fan of Survivor pretty much ever since it started. Uh, side note, I was also an Eagle Scout. Fly high, baby. Uh, you know, at times I want to be in the driver's seat and control this game. And then at times when things are, you know, getting hot, I'm just going to hop in the back seat and let mom and dad argue. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not a good liar. So I'll get in with some good alliances, but if I have to stab anybody in the back, I think you're going to see it coming. They'll be joined by returning favorites from seasons past. I don't seem like a threat, and I hope that continues. I mean, I didn't win last time, so we'll see if maybe I can fly under the radar. They're like, ah, oh, she's not dangerous. They'll have to move quickly. You can get blindsided, you know, just like that. Rely on their strengths. I'm gonna have to play a great game in the movie challenges. And play more boldly than ever before. 
buckle up is the most exhausted, the most hungry, the most emotionally drained I have ever been. Coming this summer, join us for Survivor Nowhere to Hide.